Alright, welcome back guys, JC here. A lot of you have requested for me to make a video going over different video transmitters to help you pick and choose which one would, would be best for you. So here it is. Uh, we'll be going over some products here on the workbench as well as going online and uh, I'll be showing you some stuff on there as well. So first up, you want to choose what frequency you want your video transmitter to broadcast on. Uh, the main three options are going to be 1.3 GHz, 2.4, and 5.8. The majority of us, at least in the freestyling and racing part of this hobby, uses 5.8. The reason for this is because most of the transmitters, and I don't mean video transmitters, I mean like your remote controllers, operate on 2.4 gigahertz. So 2.4 gigahertz video transmitters are out of the question. This will leave 1.3 and 5.8. Out of those two, uh, the reason we use 5.8 is because the 5.8 antennas are this size where if you use 1.3 gigahertz your antennas are this size uh, this, the reason is because the length of the wire determines the frequency so the lower the frequency the longer the wires have to be the bigger the antenna is going to be uh, so these are uh, a much better choice not only that but these cost more and they break more easy because they don't have protective covers 1.3 does have awesome penetration I mean, if we could get that amount of penetration out of 5.8 gigahertz antennas, that would be perfect. But that's not how physics work. Now moving on, you want to choose your power level. The most common options are going to be 25 milliwatts, 200, and 600. Every now and then you will see 400 and 800. Uh, but like I said, the common ones are 25, 200, and 600. As far as choosing this, uh, obviously the more milliwatts the video transmitter uses you're going to get better range and better penetration where with a 25 milliwatt video transmitter the range and penetration isn't going to be that great it's still very usable but it's nothing like a 600 milliwatt video transmitter now the catch to this is because I fly by myself majority of the time I use 600 milliwatt video transmitters in those cases but the problem is whenever you get to that power level your video, if you're flying with friends and other people, your video will bleed onto their video. And if they're using a 600 milliwatt video transmitter, then their video will bleed on to, onto yours. I mean, you could be on completely different frequencies, bands, everything. You could have a right-hand polarized antenna, they could have a left hand. That's still not going to be enough. And for this reason, a lot of races, they require that you use no larger than a 25 milliwatt video transmitter. Some will let you get away with the 200 milliwatt video transmitter. It just depends on where you are and what the race is and uh, stuff like that. They, it's going to be one of the two. So if you do plan on racing, or not even racing, even if you plan on flying with other friends, then I will recommend going no higher than 200 milliwatts. The other thing to consider is your local laws. Um, it seems like every country has different laws on, you know, broadcasting video so I'm not even going to go into that just check your local laws now you can have all three in one video transmitter they actually do make transmitters where you can switch between 25 200 and 600 uh, like for example ready-made RC makes a few uh, Lumineer makes a few uh, you could even go on Amazon and get the eSheen well, not just eSheen but there's actually multiple on Amazon and even Banggood I'll leave links to uh, all these products in the description below so you don't have to look for them just look in the description and you'll find them there but here we have one that does 25 200 and 600 another thing you may want to consider but it's really not that important and not many people know this but uh, most video transmitters whenever you change your frequencies the power output actually changes so say for example this one is a 600 milliwatt video transmitter on my if I'm on the Fat Chart Band channel 1, it's not actually 600. It's 600 on channel 4, which is in the middle, but the lower the channel, the lower the output is. So on channel 1, it's actually putting out like, I don't know, say 550 milliwatts. Where if I'm on channel 8, it's actually putting out like 650. And then some video transmitters, usually the higher quality ones, they, they don't do that. If it's a 600 milliwatt uh, video transmitter, say for example the lumineers it's going to be 600 milliwatts on all channels but like i said it's not that big of a deal because 
uh, you're, you're you're not talking about that much of a change. Not only that, but if you're worried about losing an extra 50 milliwatts, then just buy a bigger video transmitter. If you're using a 200 milliwatt video transmitter and on channel 8 to get those extra 50 milliwatts, then you, I mean you might as well just bump it up to a 600 or even 400. Or just don't worry about it because 50 milliwatts isn't is it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Next you need to determine if you want the connector on the video transmitter to use SMA or RP SMA. The RP stands for reverse polarization. Uh, but basically what this means is, uh, well, the majority of antennas, most of them use SMA. That's kind of like the standard. And SMA means that on the antenna, it's going to have, if you look in the middle of the connector, it's going to have that pin. And then on your video transmitter, it's going to have the female end, which is going to be like a kind of like a cylinder that the male pin slides into. Where RP SMA is the exact opposite. Your antenna is going to have the female cylinder, and then the video transmitter is going to have the male pin that slides into the antenna. So just be aware of that. Make sure you're if you buy a video transmitter with RP SMA, make sure you're buying antennas that also use RP SMA. If you accidentally buy a video transmitter with a connector that you do not want. I do have a video showing you how you can uh, desolder the connector and solder on the connector that you want. Just look at my repairs playlist and you will find that video in there. Now let's talk about features. I already covered being able to switch between uh, 25, 200, and 600 milliwatts, you know, like this one right here or the other ones I've shown you. Next, consider if you want audio or not. Uh, some video transmitters, like even this one here, has a built-in microphone, uh, and it will automatically transmit the audio to your receiver. And then some, instead of having the built-in microphone, they expect you to have a camera with a built-in microphone, and then you have an additional audio wire that will run to your video transmitter, and it will transmit audio that way. Another feature is... Uh, most video transmitters, once you plug in your LiPo battery, they automatically turn on and transmit. Uh, this can be a problem for two reasons. For one, if I'm just sitting here testing stuff and I just want to plug in a LiPo battery to test something else, like my motors or ESCs set something up in Betaflight, I, it's kind of like a hassle for me to, like, it sounds lazy, but I hate walking across the room just to find an antenna and put it on. Because if you don't already know, if you power on your video transmitters with no antenna on it, it's going to fry the video transmitter. I mean, it may or may not, but even if it doesn't, it's going to degrade the quality. Where I like using video transmitters like this one, where it will power on, the LCD screen will power on, but it's not going to transmit until I hold down the button. This way, uh, like I know a lot of you guys, it's in, in every video where I power this thing on, any of my multi I power on, someone always says, you didn't put an antenna on your video transmitter. And I'm like, oh my god, if I have to explain this one more time, it's not transmitting until I hold the button down. The other reason why you may want this feature is if you are racing, uh, like I said, you sometimes can cut into other people's video. So if you were at a race and you were in the pits and there was a race going on and you want to test something on your multi-rotor, if you plug in that battery and you are already on the same band and frequency as someone that is currently racing, your video is going to cut into theirs and they're going to crash and they're probably going to be extremely pissed if they find out who it was that powered on their multi-rotor and their video transmitter. So having that button is a very nice feature in that case. Also consider your bands and channels. Uh, I'd say the majority of video transmitters now have at least I don't know, like five different bands. Some of them don't come with a race band. The race band is like an extra. Obviously, the race band is nice if you are actually racing, but even if you're just flying with friends, the race band is nice because the frequencies are more spread out than the other bands. That would be a really long explanation, but basically the, the further the frequencies are spread out from one another, the less your video is going to cut into other people's video. So race band is another thing to consider. Also, uh, another feature is going to be a SMA extension uh, because if your SMA connector is right off the video transmitter and you put it, an antenna on it, uh, they do break off. They, I break them off all the time. That's why I started 
uh, I just remove the SMA connector and I solder on my own coax cable and make something like this that screws into my top plate so that way when I crash all the pressure goes to the top plate instead of breaking the connector off the uh, video transmitter. I have a video showing you how to make your own extension as well but if you can't be bothered to make something like that you can buy video transmitters with it already on something like this or even something like this. SMA extensions, I highly recommend them because like I said, uh, SMA connectors break off all the time unless you like zip tie your antenna to your frame so that way the pressure goes to the zip tie instead of the connector. Now there are some video transmitters coming around with even more advanced features. For example, uh, if you have the Fat Shark LaForge V2 diversity receiver in your Fat Shark goggles, it actually has a, let me find a picture, here we go, it has an IR LED and you, IR LEDs they can send out a frequency of lights and which is basically a code and that's that's basically how your TVs work with your TV remote it's an IR light that's how you change your channels and volume everything else power on power off well they've actually integrated this into the LaForge uh, V2 diversity receivers and then they have a video transmitter that receives that IR light and you can change your uh, channels, bands, the LED lights on the video transmitter and a bunch of other stuff. Another one is going to be the uh, TBS Unify series of video transmitters. They actually have a bunch of them, it's not just this one and I mean this thing has of course all the bands, all the frequencies, it's lightweight, you can choose between 25 up to 800 milliwatts. It has a built-in on-screen display where you can change your uh, bands and frequencies through the video transmitter itself instead of having to press a button on it, and a bunch of other stuff. So you can just come to this website and check it out if you're interested in it. That's going to do it for this one guys, I hope this helped you out. If you have any more video requests, leave it for me in the comment box. Thanks, and I will see you again soon.